And that can be your centering thought, right? So whenever we offer a class or a meditation, it's helpful to have one key idea for the practitioners to circle back around to. And I recommend revisiting the center of thought, the centering thought throughout the meditation experience periodically. The next thing that I recommend is a message of the day. Can we expand on the centering thought by a message of the day? And this, can, this could be like a quote, uh, any of your favorite sayings, maybe a, a short one or two, three sentence um, idea, this message of the day, maybe just something that somebody could take the time and keep in the back of their mind and pull out from their back pocket whenever needed. And then the actual meditation, we're gonna have a few components of it. So we'll have, in this example today, we'll be working through a guided meditation because we have a script. And then there might be either some quiet time, chanting, music, whatever you feel is right for you and your practitioners. And then a closing activity. And for that, I recommend the Reflecting Journal. I feel like we can help our practitioners take a journey in a meditative experience. And if they have a moment to jot down in their own handwriting on something that begins to not only be something they can take with them, but also reinforce what they've learned another way. And then hopefully in the future as they get back to that they could find that moment, you know, as our brains, the chemistry of our brains is just so amazing. It's so miraculous. As we, as we visualize a place in time, a place that we've visited or something we've done or a feeling we had or an experience, our brain oftentimes could perceive that as in the present tense. And the beauty of that is if we learn to harness this, we can teach our practitioners how to find any moment that's beautiful in their lives and summons it to be their present moment. And this can be particularly helpful in times of stress or um, overwhelm, any time a practitioner is looking to find presence. So try and consider these, these basic pieces of your meditation script. So go ahead and start writing out your basic idea and centering thought. I'll type that in the chat there for you. Take a few minutes to do that. Okay, how did that go for everybody? Why don't you take a second and just type in the chat there uh, how that went for you. And if you feel comfortable sharing your basic idea or centering thought, go ahead and type that in. And I'll type in mine.
anything you type in the chat, I won't be calling out your name because we are recording this. And then that way you can share without it being suspended in time forever. <laughs> We've got this non grasping as extension of non attachment, you know that's such a beautiful thing as we as we find ourselves clinging to what we think we want or what we think might be best for us, we oftentimes lose sight of the real the real gifts that are brought to our lives. Um, in this way. It's, it's so powerful to be able to live the eight limbs of yoga. It's another one. I am fully in the present moment. And so that's, that's really well said that fully piece in that oftentimes we have one foot in and we have one foot out any given activity. So I find that, you know, most of my activities, I try not to exceed more than a couple of hours. And then that way I can be completely in the moment that I'm in fully, fully, fully present and learning how to do that, whether it be through a, a 60 second meditation, an hour long meditation, you know, a, a day long retreat, a, a whole weekend event, you know, whatever one's life being present in the moment. And I know that Eckhart Tolle absolutely attributes presence to, um, to joy. For me, I chose in this present moment, I am safe. And so I feel that we need to um, stay in our scope of practice with practitioners that might come to yoga for varying reasons. But if we can teach them tools on if you're safe right now, then anxiety or panic or anything like that oftentimes has more to do with times that have come before or times that are perceived ahead, like worrying about the future. If you can acknowledge you're safe right now, then chances are that anxiety level can start to come down. And I really like tapping. I like EFT, EFT for this quite a bit. What else do we have here? I have everything I need to be successful. That's beautiful, right? The, the quest for what we need before we can start towards our goals, whatever they might be, I would say is, is the most limiting thing. I, I see practitioners coming into this industry like, well, maybe one day I'll do that, but first I have to do this, this, and this. And honestly, you really do have everything you need to be successful. And whatever that means to you, the more you embrace that, the more we find um, it grows, those opportunities grow. And, and the definition of success even, even mutates a little bit, which is always exciting to see. You know, I know what I thought was successful for me turned out to be much different than what I now view as success years later. Um, we do that one at school. I am fully in the present moment. So yeah, so I'm embarking on children's yoga because I feel that yoga can serve the schools and I would like to see um, teachers and students alike benefit from that. And so just teaching them simple ideas such as being fully present in the moment is really good. Yeah, and the safe one, that's good. I am safe in this moment. Uh, okay, very nice, you guys, very good. Uh, all right, the next one is the message of the day. So just for the sake of time, if you haven't already written your message of the day, you can just write something that is a sentence or two. Or you can jump on Google and Google a Rumi quote. Uh, and I just pick Rumi quote because it's quick and easy to get quotes about presence. There you go. You can copy and paste that if you like. Again, that I have everything I need to be successful piece, not overthinking it, not always having it be the most exact perfect thing, you know? something that gets the job done. You can always refine it as time goes on. We'll take a moment to do that and then jot that down if you could.
All right, now I'll just type mine in here for you guys that I found. All right. Here's one. Sometimes the best gift you can give someone or receive is the gift of presence, undivided attention. I agree. Have we ever done that where, you know, we had one ear in on a conversation and we weren't really, really with somebody or somebody was talking to us and we stopped what we're doing to check our phones or maybe we find our mind begins to wander. Like learning how to be present through meditation is a great way to serve our relationships. So if everybody else could just take a moment and just pop something in the chat, and I don't want you to overthink of it, worry about typos or things like that. I'm not really in the worrying about typo camp. If I see a typo, I will go back and I will correct my own personal work, and I do do that. But I feel that um, seeking perfection prevents um, sharing a message. So don't worry about it being perfect, but do type in something, whether it be a quote, uh, I can even screen share my screen here for you that I found. And I think I just top, what did I type in here? Uh, Rumi quotes about presence, if that's what I went with. And you know, it's interesting, I, I took a course on Rumi. I'm always taking a course and then I come back and I teach you guys what I've learned. And um, I think it's it's beautiful that I see so many quotes referencing Rumi in a romantic light, you know, maybe between lovers. And uh, Rumi is is rarely um, talking about lovers. Um, things are much deeper in these messages. So if there's a quote that you're really drawn to, I invite you to do a little extra work when you have some time. And then your meditation uh, could, script could be reading the entire passage from which a quote was simply extracted. And uh, I think you guys might be surprised. It's, it's fun. Here we go. Here's one. Um, do not dwell in the past. Do not dream of the future. Concentrate the mind in this present moment, Buddha. Lovely, lovely, lovely. So you guys get the idea. We want to expand on our basic idea and our centering thought and then talk about it for a little bit, right? So when we're talking, we want to be mindful of the cadence of our voice. I know sometimes if we're new at something, we might speak a little more quickly, um, especially if nerves kick in, but we really want to try and find a tempo of our voice. The music can be a very, very strong aid in this. Um, you know, for me, I had to work a bit harder for pitch and tone, and there are voice lessons, and I would imagine there's endless um, free resources online, especially right now, that one could go and get some voice lessons. And that doesn't mean that you're not perfect the way you are. It just means that you're spending time and energy man mastering your craft. Um, I would say that before I mindfully did some work on the, um, before I mindfully did some voice work, which largely was awareness, truly, I would speak very fast when excited or nervous and my pitch would get high. And that didn't always work for meditation as you can imagine. Uh, okay, so we have our basic idea. We have our message of our day or our quote and it can be your own quote. It can be your own favorite thing. And it doesn't have to be some deep spiritual thing. It can be anything you want. Sometimes the simple ones are the, pe the ones that people love the most. So now we're going to take 10 minutes to write up a guided meditation. So I want you to denote at the end of it whether or not you're going to have quiet in the background, if you've decided chanting's going to be involved there, or if you're going to be having music go along while you share your guided meditation. Just make sure that any of these things are an enhancement to the message and not meant to overtake your message. So one thing I'd really like to invite you to do at EDGE is to hold space for you to create your own organic material. I know that so many people come to yoga teacher training wondering how they're going to teach the asana 
And that actually comes easier than they think. And at the end, it's I, I, I you know, I still don't have that much in, in line of meditation. So let's get our books out and let's just write something up based on what we've gotten so far. And if you're like, oh shoot, I didn't get anything so far, then feel free to use any of the items that are in the chat right now. We're all here to share and teach one another. So if you feel inspired by something that you saw in the chat, I give you permission to build off of that. Okay, so we'll do that for 10 minutes and then we'll re reconvene and we'll set the stage for our closing activity and journal. Have our five minute break and then Jen will resume. So that's the remainder of the day. The one thing I do ask is um, we are, especially now that we're beginning this new trimester as we're moving into the July phase, which is much more interactive, so much more about filling out the workbook, so much more about activities such as this. Uh, please arrive at training a few minutes early, if not on time. I don't want to lock the meetings because sometimes, you know, the call drops and then you can't get back in. Um, but these guided activities that we do do require that you that you come, you know, a moment or two early and that you stay through the entire lesson. So if you cannot stay for the whole lesson between one and two, please leave it one. Um, and then that way, who's ever presenting, whether it be myself or after this, Jen, we know if we put you in a breakout room, we don't find where they go. <laughs> which is something that does happen too. So go on ahead and do that and then we'll resume in 10 minutes. So right now we're going to write up our own guided meditation script.
Okay, welcome back. So I know that 10 minutes can go by awfully quick and maybe you just started getting a, a hang of what you were doing. Maybe you're on a roll and I'll go ahead and share my setup sequencing and how I go about doing things. And you can go ahead and grab this copy and paste this and then you can build on it, you know, in a future time. For me, my centering thought that we that we did before, or basic idea, is in this present moment I am. In this present moment I am. Safe. I will copy and paste that. In this present moment I am safe. So that's the idea that I'm trying to share with my folks. Again, observing my scope of practice, knowing that unless I'm a clinical psychologist, that I need to be very mindful of my word choice. The chant that I'll be using is so hum, and that means I am. So again, simplifying all of the stories that we tell ourselves in our mind, you know, I need this, I did that, I have this, there's that. I am encompasses a, a sense of safety because if you are well enough to say I am, then there is a safety that can be applied right there. For the quote that I chose is, in this moment, I am safe from Rumi. And if I wanted to look that up, I could then read the entire passage and that could be my script. The next piece that I want to pick up is any sort of room set up that will begin before the meditation. So I'll invite the practitioners to roll up the end of their yoga mats in order to elevate the hips. It might be some time before people have yoga blankets and bolsters and things of this nature available to them. And as we were talking about our retreat, especially not if we're out, you know, in grassy clearings, do we commonly have those things. So by rolling up the end of the mat, we allow the practitioners to elevate their hips. And when that happens, the knees can fall and soften the lumbar spine. And here's my guided meditation for you. And just putting it together briefly, taking a comfortable seat and close your eyes, rest your hands in your lap and take a moment to bring awareness to where you are. In this moment, you are seated in a yoga studio. Your eyes are closed and your shoulders are soft. Allow your knees to fall open with ease. Feel a softness in your body as you imagine the items in the room. Can you visualize the picture on the wall of, and then go back and write the details there and insert them there, and you can continue your story on from there. After you've done so, you can have your closing activity of, I invite you to join me in the chant, so hum, which means I am, and know that you are safe in this present moment. So once again, we're bringing it back to where we are and what we're doing. And then we would hold some space for a journaling activity. Let me just pop that right in your chat right there. So I hope that just putting pen to paper started to get the wheels turning on the process of building a meditation. Just like building a sauna sequence, it does have parts. And if we break it up in parts, I feel that it's so much more accessible to write our own meditation scripts. And then you know, if this is hard for you, there are plenty of them that are out there. You could just buy meditation scripts and then share them in your classes if you like. But I do believe that for it to be truly heartfelt and resonate with your truth, that that best comes from your words. So I do hope that you guys enjoyed this activity today and I appreciate your joining me.